Hey, what's going on, guys and gals? Troy, ATXRC Productions here, 3DR Solo Owners and Productions Group. And check us out on Kickstarter and Facebook at ATX Drone Space. For now, this is my drone space, but um, we're going to get there. All right, so we got some toys on the table today, and we're talking about Solo. Um, I just want to say, first and foremost, I use the FPVLR Spherical Helix Antenna Array when I want to do my long range and... I'm in a heavily congested area, whether it be Wi-Fi or whether it be obstructions and a need for penetration. I will get to what that means in a minute, and it's the reason why I have this going on right here. Um, before I go any further, though, Tony, listen, man, your product is great, and I really, really appreciate what you've done as far as being the really the only one putting out a really great product for solo specifically for the antenna setups. Um, it works. It's proven. We all know that. As far as the rest of whatever goes on in Facebook and the way that you've responded to some of your customers' complaints and some of the ways you've handled some situations, I'll be honest, I don't support you, Tony, as the individual. Again, I support FPVLR.com because the product works. It's a great product, and you're the only one out there currently on the market with something that I can prove works. Um, so I just want to put that out there, people. I take a lot of heat for supporting Tony. I support the product. That's it. I don't get paid by him. He doesn't give me freebies. I did get a small discount, but again, like I said in all my other videos, I have the original prototype. It is not even the best or the ones that you guys got off online, and I still paid a decent penny for it, uh, which is fine. I'm not complaining. I just want everybody to be transparent about this. Done. All right. We're two minutes in. Let's get this over with. Here we go. Why do we got toys here? Well, the green guys and the brown guy are going to signify trees. I have two cars here, a big old truck and a car, and then I've got my solo pilot. He is a ninja, apparently. Thanks, Parker. He's at school, and he'd probably be really upset if I, he knew I was doing this, um, or he'd want to be involved. So our solo copter, it's not a copter, I know, but it's a red level. So we have our guy, we have our solo, we have our neighborhood basically is what I'm signifying. This comes up because there is a lot of talk and I actually have contributed to some of this talk about how Wi-Fi and the congestion of Wi-Fi affects solo. It's true that I have found that Wi-Fi definitely in some form or manner, just like air quality and the moisture and density and temperature of the air seems to also affect it because I can't get repeatable consistent numbers. Um, yes, it affects it. That being said, I think there's a bigger issue with a lot of people out there and it's because of inexperience and it's because of everybody being excited and wanting to fly and I get that. Let's talk real quick about flying in our neighborhoods. Why don't we fly in neighborhoods? Well, first, our neighbors hate it if they don't like drones, and nobody's trying to really upset their neighbors, and you really shouldn't, and you shouldn't be that guy that's like, oh, it's my house, I can fly here. No, it's a neighborhood. Neighborhood implies that you're all equals in sharing that common ground, if you would, of all collectively living together. You want to own your own land, go out to the country, okay? Just saying. Am I saying that it's 100% right? No, but common sense says that I don't want to piss the guy off next to me and I don't want to be a jerk about it because he didn't ask to be a part of my hobby. That's it. So just respect him, okay? That's not the main reason, though. The main reason is safety. Well, what's safety about? Yeah, we know there's a lot of people in the houses and stuff. We get that. So if something happens, it's hard to you know make sure you're not going to hurt nobody. Yes, that's important. But for me, the bigger issue is the ability to quickly lose control because of a lot of different uncontrollable situations or misperceptions of what your environment actually is. Now we speak of line of sight with safety. What's line of sight? Line of sight means your eyeballs are on the copter and you can orient the copter because you have it in your line of sight. That's important for safety reasons, for knowing what the copter is doing, for being able to quickly orient and land the copter or move the copter out of the way if necessary. That being said, there's a more important line of sight that you should be worried about and it's about the radio frequency or the radio controls. You're here holding your radio and you're holding it at about waist level typically between your waist and your upper chest area, right? 
That's how I fly, at least. I fly about like this. So if my antennas are in my midsection and I take off, and I'm going to just assume that there's going to be a home behind me. So there's a home right behind this guy. He's flying from his front yard. And yes, I'm kind of calling out somebody that posted on our Facebook group. Um, but it's important that I talk about this. This gentleman, and I'm going to kind of reenact, he had a giant tree right here. He was in a driveway. There was not necessarily a car there, but I'm just going to put a car there. And I'm going to go ahead and put a car, a truck over here on the street. Why cars and trucks? They're large metal objects, very dense. They have radio frequencies coming in and out, whether it be radio waves, satellite radio, or even Wi-Fi. There are a lot of Wi-Fi enabled vehicles these days, people. In fact, almost all of them coming out uh, the new showrooms are. So this gentleman said he had only a 300 foot range last night. And the reason why was I noticed when he took off in his video, he took off from his front yard. There's a giant tree just next to him. There's his house behind him. He goes up and almost a little bit over himself, starts to turn and yaw, and that's when he loses control at about 200 feet above him. So I'm gonna just say a couple of things. First of all, flying that high directly above yourself, even anywhere is not okay. Uh, it's gonna cause a loss of control. We talked about the donut effect with the dipoles. That's why you can't keep them pointed down, but there still is a loss of control and donut effect. So flying above yourself, you're limiting your controls possibly by the ability for the radio waves to get there. The stock antennas are not directional. However, FPVLR ones are as, and some other setups are. That being said, you still never really want to fly just above you. I mean, there's all things that could go wrong. It, have you ever flown above yourself and tried to orient the copter? I mean, it's tough. Um, two, you're in a neighborhood flying that high new firmware testing. I'm not trying to call you up. I'm just saying we already talked about it. Fly somewhere safe and open. But... His issue was flying above himself. However, a lot of people talk about low control or low range and they talk about Wi-Fi congestion. Well, my argument to that is, yes, the Wi-Fi is not helping, just like the density of the cars and the metal objects. However, line of sight is just about orienting the copter for safety. The actual controls also need to be unobstructed as far as the radio waves reaching the copter. And it's very important with Solo because we know that Solo has a, a weak stock antenna setup. So it's already going to be susceptible to losing control through penetrating objects very easily. I mean, it, it does not like being on the other side of a tree. So we need to make sure that we don't confuse ourselves and think that just because we see the copter that the radio sees the copter. And that is what we're going to talk about right now. So if I take off here and I've got line of sight and I fly 80 feet in the air and I go over and in between these trees, I'm still here. My radio actually still has direct line of sight or direct contact with my copter. However, as I start to get a little higher and further away, that angle of the radio frequency has to lower because I'm going further and higher away and I have to reach it. Now that radio wave has to penetrate this tree in order to reach this copter. It's not going to happen with the stock radio. At least once you get about 200 feet, it's definitely not. They're, they have to be able to communicate. Now we know from middle school that radio waves bounce. So there is a possibility that you're going to get some bounce over. But it's still not going to be the proper signal strength. So your RSSI is going to go uh, well lower or higher, whatever it is. Um, however you want to look at it, it's going to drop. Your RSSI is going to drop. Um, RSSI is the radio signal strength indicator. So as it drops and it reaches its point where Solo says, that's not enough for me, it's going to return home. That's it. Is it Wi-Fi possibly in the area too, being that you're in a neighborhood? Yeah, it can't help. But even if you're not in a Wi-Fi area and you're taking off from an area with surroundings, buildings, cars, trees, brush, even landscape, if you live in like a low, like a low lying area and you're taking off and kind of flying over some berms or anything, radio waves have to pen be able to penetrate. Again, yes, they're going to bounce, but there's also all kinds of obstructions there. So keep in mind obstructions and obstacles. 
Don't fly in your neighborhood. Not with Solo. I have a copter that I, I would fly in the neighborhoods if I needed or wanted to or I used to. Um, it was much more reliable as far as signal strength, though. I knew how far I could get, and interference wasn't an issue as far as obstacles or penetration. Um, last thing, the reason the FPVLR or Helix or even Patch and other antenna arrays actually are better, including the Fry Sky, Free Sky 5 dBi uh, dipoles, is because they penetrate more. Um, the spherical Helix in particular, as well as other Helix helicals, um, definitely have high penetration. That's what they're about. Is they're about a small focal, uh, a lower focused, higher penetrating uh, signal. So that's a good reason to switch over to a spherical helix or even some of these other antenna arrays that are going to come out very soon is because those are for penetration and signal strength across the entire spectrum. Um, so you're going to get a clearer signal. You're going to get a longer lasting signal and you're gonna get a deeper penetrating signal. You're not always gonna get consistency because that seems to be related to solo and its actual um, hardware. Last piece of information, doing a hardware switch on the Wi-Fi cards is not recommended by me because of the information that I've seen posted by some 3DR reps. Um, it's been recommended not to do it. Um, why, I couldn't tell you other than it doing the Wi-Fi card swap you do lose some telemetry apparently without being able to, it lets you go in there and reprogram solo, which now you're getting onto a level of, will all the firmware's future work? Will anything they do in the future possibly conflict with it? Um, so I would just wait. From my understanding, things are gonna get better on that end as well as far as connectivity and all of that. Um, the last piece of information on that is I was told Wi-Fi was definitely chosen for a very specific reason and it's gonna become very clear at some point in the near future. I put my thumb on the fact that it's probably rules and regulations coming down from the FAA, but that's just my guess. Uh, anyways, guys, we're at like 12 minutes. I'm going to try to get out of here. Appreciate you watching for playtime. Appreciate all the support. Appreciate all the love. 3DR Solo Owners and Productions Group. We're giving away a free smart battery. Still got solo knobs. Come check us out. Check the YouTube channels out. Um, again, thanks for the support. Love you guys. Fly safe. Fly smart. Fly 3DR. Fly in an open area. Peace. Peace. Oh, yeah.